Hi, I'm Matt and I'm Head of Passive Portfolios here at AJ Bell. Just over a year ago, we launched our two income-focused AJ Bell funds, the Income Fund and the Income and Growth Fund. We've now passed the one-year anniversary of these funds and I wanted to take the opportunity to update you on how they have performed. I'll also explore how we're navigating the market impact of the coronavirus crisis, which has been especially challenging given recent cuts to UK dividends. Firstly, a reminder of what each fund is trying to achieve. The AJ Bell Income Fund uses a combination of bonds and shares, seeking to deliver an annual income of between 3 and 5%. As it's made up of lower risk bonds and higher risk shares, the aim is to keep the capital value of the fund steady over the longer term. But in the shorter term, the value will still fluctuate, as we've seen during the current market sell-off. The AJ Bell Income and Growth Fund is predominantly invested in shares, with a small amount of alternative assets and high yielding bonds. It still aims to deliver an income of between 3 and 5%. However, given the higher risk, higher return characteristics of these assets, it aims to grow the value of the fund in line with CPI inflation over the longer term. Again, the fund value will fluctuate in the short term, and the magnitude of short term losses is likely to be larger in market sell offs. Both funds have managed to hit their income goal since launch, with the Income Fund delivering an income of 3.9% and the Income and Growth Fund returning 3.7% in income. After getting off to a solid start in 2019, both funds saw a sharp reversal in capital values in the early part of this year, as share markets fell. The impact on the Income Fund was cushioned by its holdings in bonds whereas the Income and Growth Fund saw larger falls due to being mainly invested in shares. Although it's disappointing to experience these falls, the outcome is within our modelled scenarios. And over the longer term, we are confident the fund capital objectives can still be met if markets recover in a similar way to previous crashes. Looking at the total return of the funds, accounting for both income and capital returns, the Income Fund was down 2% since launch to the end of April, whilst the Income and Growth Fund was down 11%. However, for context, the FTSE UK All Share Index, a measure of UK share prices, was down 17% over the same period. On the other hand, global bonds, measured by the Bloomberg Barclays Index, were up around 10%. Before I discuss the current income environment, I'll take a step back and explain why income funds are used as a strategy by investors. As we have seen recently, the capital value of funds are heavily linked to the performance of the markets, and it is impossible for fund managers to predict crises such as pandemics, wars and natural disasters. When you are relying on your investment portfolio to support your spending, such as in retirement, Selling your portfolio to raise cash just after a market fall means you will miss out on any subsequent market rally. However, by receiving an income payment, you can leave your holdings untouched and wait for the market to recover. For example, after the financial crash in 2008, it took about five years for global share markets to fully recover. Many people also use income funds even if they don't need a regular income. The rationale here is that income generating shares offer regular income return and are less reliant on company management decisions to grow future profits and in turn the share price. Of course, when dividends are cut, the strategy can underperform as a result. Following the recent crisis, we have seen over 45% of listed companies in the UK cut dividends. In addition, we have seen certain sectors such as banks and energy hit harder. We have also seen different regions affected in different ways, depending on how the economy has been impacted. For example, in the UK, with the second largest reported death toll in the world so far, 
it has been hit harder than other regions such as Asia. Within the UK stock market, the top five dividend payers make up over a third of the total dividends. This means that even if you invest in a FTSE 100 tracker, you still face significant risk of a lower yield if just a handful of companies, such as Shell, cut their dividend. Therefore, building your own income strategy carries the risks that both the income stream and the capital values could fall significantly, depending on precisely which part of the markets and which companies you are invested in. By following four simple rules, the AJ Wealth Funds try and avoid some of the potential pitfalls that an income investor may face in the current environment. 1. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. By using a mix of diversified funds and ETFs, we reduce the impact of individual companies cutting their dividends or their bonds defaulting. 2. Go international. Although a proportion of both funds is invested in UK shares, the remainder is international. Given the particular issues facing the UK, dividends overseas so far have faced smaller cuts. 3. Avoid income traps. Rather than just buying the highest yielding companies indiscriminately, we use funds and ETFs that favour high yielding companies with a quality tilt and a track record of paying dividends. Although there is no guarantee that this will be the case in the future, it does lower the likelihood of large falls in income. We would rather deliver a yield of close to 3% mark than take excessive risk. 4. Generate different sources of income. Bonds and shares have different drivers of income. By combining both together in our income fund, and more recently adding them to the income and growth fund, it further diversifies the income stream. As a bond falls in value, its yield actually increases, as long as it doesn't go bust. This can help offset some of the falls seen in share dividends. As managers of the fund, we continue to monitor the current income environment. We recently increased bond exposure in the income and growth fund and are ready to make any further changes we think are necessary. Thank you for taking the time to watch this update and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. 